Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Nicola It makes me ask if some of the people slamming it even realizing how bloody rude they are being to British values and culture, because that was about as close you come to watching a display of British culture deep in those caverns of Buckingham Palace down within the glorious halls. My heart-wrenching plight glows its needles upon me. An aging authority of tradition and duty, King Charles has been contemplating the trip across the Atlantic. His destination? A tuggingly endearing road to cuddle his American-born grandkids Archie and also the youngest member of yourself, Lilibet. Not a state visit. With the Atlantic Ocean separating them and legal battles firmly in the past, might royal responsibility be enough to heal a family fractured by thousands of miles and emotional distance? King Charles contemplating U.S. state go to so he can visit grandchildren Archie and Lilibet. However, the Duke of Sussex said that his daughter had been met only once by him and Archie a few times while he claimed to have a close relationship with Prince William's two youngest children credit. Reuters slash Toby Melville slash WPA pool the family video chats to the king back in Montecito. Charles seeks family, but is it a stunt, serving example for strong Queen Camilla the UK security drama involving Prince Harry is never-ending, which has seriously changed how he feels about leaving the kids back in England. While Charles is considering a full visit to the US so he can spend more time with his baby son and grandchildren, there are logistical barriers. Harry, meanwhile is reportedly narrowing down a UK base to near his father's Gloucestershire British estate amid speculation that he will want greater contact with family members. Of course, I understand and I also miss his kids, all this after a one-night stand for those few who don't know that bit, but stop. The other one can't tie his shoes, so three left. Then all you are doing is offering Harry information he may not need back at you we can't do now blackmail. Not clear for me which one to correct, blackmailing, slash blackmailing, if your money, that's right ours, taxes needs faux security punters. If not, then all is well in his world, and don't forget, he once said that if offered the choice between staying on with us or hiding away in a hotel somewhere at our expense instead of at no cost to us. Harry let it grow Will Smith, follow Blackpink, all remember us and your entire household. Here need you. But we should focus this problem in another way, right? If the ye old one-handed caveman is gonna stagger over to America and demand Archie and Lilibet, it wouldn't be a surprise visit but like two countries. His grandkids, Lilibet and Archie, they never even met the guy, wouldn't be aware of him since they'd only see him a few times always as grandpa. King Charles would have to fly across thousands of miles, and the difficulty was compounded by Prince Harry still tied up in a wide-scale court case against several newspapers. Also, do not forget his family protection. There are times when legal wrangling over which body is responsible for footing the bill and keeping Harry, his ex-wife Meghan Markle and their children safe would fit for well with parleys about a royal pilgrimage. And here we ask if royal duties are still possible despite land, laws and security coming in between the family my nephew or not. As kings of the future when Charles passes on, what will be consequences resultant from King Charles's demand to maintain contact with Archie and Lilibet while all his enemies around them gather rubbing their hands? Harry is, fingers crossed well aware of this, just because King Charles wants to see his grandkid does not indicate Harry has actually been forgiven. Harry is also reportedly keen on settling his family near Charles's Highgrove estate as part of plans for him and brother, Prince William who turns 38 today whether he becomes king or not. Wasn't he teasing Harry a little here? He can stay away and so be it, his narcissistic wife. So what about those children? He to everyone who believed in it already thought this was true, but there were only rumors, no proof or confirmation that they did, of them existing. For example, Archie and Lilibet Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's children have been cloistered away in modern American life with few public appearances or sightings, just pictures. But why did King Charles even bother visiting with them? Nonsense. The Markles could sell footage of the trip he took to Montecito. 
it's not happening. And to visualize the media storm that Harry and Meghan are ongoing for not a firm grip on reality here, i.e. naked King W hopping across an entire ocean just getting drinks with his buddies. Everything she does will be dissected, perhaps even commodified by a pair who have fully bought into fame and scandal. And now, with Father's Day behind us and court case after legal wrangling following close on the heels, it would seem even less likely that Grandpa reunites quietly in those Montecito hills here anytime soon. The truly basic ideas of royal duty and familial obligation have been reaching one another through a morass of privacy, exposure, and revenue. Some of the waters that King Charles must navigate to deliver Archie and Lilibet are trickier than those his forerunners had experienced in seeking out new realms. In other words, the idea that such a theoretical odyssey might not metastasize into either an international kerfuffle or else another Markle-sponsored money-making opportunity is about as sensible Simon and Garfunkel singing I am a rock. Or believing shoeless Joe Jackson when he says in Field of Dreams, if you build it. In any event, I doubt His Royal Majesty King Charles will be making an official visit to the U.S. just because he misses seeing the grandkids. To the American people, it's insulting. My grandparents have even inquired, you are only seeing your grandchildren? The welcome could turn nasty. Some credit is due King Charles. He likely isn't in great physical health either, but is at least able to think such thoughts. But calm down. And it was a notional stunt from Meghan and Harry that would certainly benefit the Sussexes albeit at an unacceptable cost. Apply to it what you want the term state visit is costly, tens of million and needs month upon month at a senior levels ministry. Transcripts provided by Get Transcribed, LLC. After all Harry was just as happy to refuse umpteen invites for his baby sons because they wouldn't have counted, yes really seeing what a frigging heffalump of a Theo Titbug and that non ek teamed up like then tough luck ad now Highgrove is firmly in the Prince of Wales William's hands. Harry likely doesn't want anything any closer. After all if King Charles did actually visit America wouldn't a state visit or would he be seeing the president not King Charles III's errant son and grandchildren? The king would either send for him, or Harry come alone. There is no way Harry and Meghan can get on the Air Force One to Britain as it stands. They are private citizens, not agents of the state. Over in the USA their titles are completely irrelevant. After all, what a strange desire it would be to hold on to them and name their poor little invisible children prince or princess. The king would lose face, Trip would tend to travel all the way out to America just for a look at those Harkles and their offspring. He has three beautiful grandkids here who call him Grandpa and they listen to their elders. Harry's offspring, and this is a mother who despises England. In royal terms, I know the old girl likes that sort of thing and it would be terribly bad daughter if in a wild moment I actually went to see her. And, you'll only be feeding her publicity machine even more, Natch. That release in question appears to be trying to hype Harry and Meghan specifically, and this source is, of course, Mr. Quinn. He also knows the king has never seen Lilibet, who Harry's lawyers have told a court his children can't come to Britain for platinum jubilee celebrations because of safety concerns. As for Charles, he has been off work due to poor health and his movements have also hit the buffers of restrictions imposed on him advisors in terms of what is acceptable conduct at this stage, so it's not like they are going all fancy pants Montecito really. His allegiance will remain with the empire. Of course, it is guff. Harry and Meghan can just dictate whatever they want Tom Quinn to write it for them. He'll live to regret this. I simply cannot imagine a son demanding that his father with cancer has to go see him. However, he has been looking at property in the Highgrove area. Are the ones he only sees sometimes okay for a visit or are they safe living nearer to Highgrove? My guess would be that Harry and Meghan hope to inherit it all from Charles and Will. I pray they never buy a house. Except now, with the two children predicament. Is there anybody knows the name of this school which according to claims that this boy is at the moment suttying so we can see how big hypocrisy it's still being widened, even he claimed does not want his community affected. Well, since pretty much nobody else on the planet seems to know. The kid is no longer in school with Harry and Meghan, 
As it happens, a quick Google search shows that the child attends none of the schools attended by parents. From function, exec, exec. Over and over that would be a letter the girl gets for vital records to get this birth certificate, only there is no such thing. Most likely, these reporters are unable to verify who exactly is living now with Harry and Meghan. The kid is just five years old. Are you forced to go school? He would have started school in September last year at the UK. What about homeschooling? We know there may have been reports from the local child services agency suggesting that no kids are living at the Montecito home. No toys or child car seats gone missing. This post has plenty of insane and controversial stuff in it. In other words, it is extremely unlikely. Charles was incredibly unlikely to go out of his way to visit the Markle household and even on an official call, would be unusual it would just be too much of playing to their hands. I'm willing to be that Charles could care less about whatever Harry has been up to. His three grandchildren, as well as step-grandchildren from Casey, mean the world to him, he says. How can he grow attached to kids he'd never even met, especially with the problems their parents presented him? One thing is clear. These children obviously cannot matter to him, as there isn't an official or personal photograph that shows Charles with any of them. Any Markle with such a picture would surely have used it by now. Charles mirrored the Queen's move to not be pictured with them. More importantly, we are not talking about the King coming to prepare a visit in the US with his grandkids, right? But it gets boring fast, even if does the job for your content needs. We would have hoped the palace to announce a visit, if one was due. But I can't see King Boy paying Harry a visit, especially after ignoring his invitation just last month. If it did occur, the King and Camilla probably wouldn't stay with the Sussexes. There would be bugs in every room for sure. That is the only reasons Harry could possibly have to not take his children back to Britain, other than Meghan and all of her US lawsuits that he wants covering by Brits. He is like a fantasy land. You can foot the bill, we sure as fuck don't miss you or need you around here. There is no place to hide. Tom Quinn, who spoke on behalf of the Muppets, also spread tall stories and wild chronicles. Quinn needs to get real and stop with the reality show antics. He better have a nice financial mattress because he's putting his current credibility at serious risk. Of course, it's almost certain that a 75-year-old special needs sufferer battling cancer would have made to embark on this arduous journey in the first place if his son agreed indeed to bring the children back home. That seems rather unlikely and more a dream of the royal baiting duo in Los Angeles. I think Queen Camilla and Prince William could prevent that from ever happening. He is instinctive and listens to the opinions of Camilla. We must not forget what Harry has said about her in his book Charles probably knows what they are up to and will not result in the plans of Ned. I do still have respect for Meghan because she is playing it cool up to this point. Archie is five and Lilibet three years old. There is no word on if Meghan and Harry will attend. What ended up happening, then? I have begrudgingly lost my patience for guessing, so via the channels that I had active, my friends, and through playing detective with what was out there, we know some of it to be true. I encourage you all to sit from a distance and watch this full video assuming she is the daisy chain in this situation, rather than getting all caught up personally, Meghan Markle seems like a sound choice for by a mama of Archie and Lilibet. It would be cute if Meghan had a princess and Harry had a son. The idea is truly splendid. They look great as a public relations photo op, but it is completely contradicted by billions of eyewitness testimony. But many questions have gone unanswered, ones that pertain to Jane Goodall and a 20-year-old ditched spawn who screams unlovable pillows lion-esque hysterectomies kitchen yacht girl one or two wives ladders of truth toppled onto the common head still maintains volumes never heard before in royal cruelty. They seem like scavengers, social pariahs driven into the wilderness by society. It just spirals more and more out of control for the two of them. What lies ahead for Megan? Two children may not exist. The big question, could Megan have had three children and given birth? Could there be another explanation? Almost all available evidence points in the other direction. 
I doubt the fictional character Baldrick ever said I have a cunning plan so much in every episode of Blackadder. Two dimwits should have known they would be watched this closely. Or as Sherlock Holmes might have put it, the phony miscarriage and burial claim would normally alert anyone to some fishiness. The Queen would have had a lot of in proud style already known this, but spoke as if Meghan was sterile. The path was set for a truly sensational revelation, sparked by what she told Harry. It was probably Archie-related for many reasons why Meghan was leaving the Times. If they are not his wife's offspring, even if the young ones would carry Harry's DNA, then he can still officially father children, but he could be denied to put them on a proper line of succession. The conclusion are ending in total there's four people. Although the genetic makeup of Harry bears less importance, the legitimacy of Meghan's offspring to their place in line for succession is what truly matters. At the opportune moment, Harry and Meghan will introduce the concept of surrogacy amidst a decline in King Charles III's popularity. With society becoming more progressive and accepting, they refuse to let Harry's children be stigmatized as illegitimate due to outdated royal succession regulations or the origins of Meghan's eggs. Currently, their focus is on enhancing their individual and collective reputations in preparation for challenging the limitations imposed by the royal family. The couple is resolute in upholding their integrity and avoiding any disgrace. They have no intentions of conforming to traditional royal customs or grooming their offspring for future monarchy roles. Their strategic actions form part of a carefully constructed plan to navigate the intricate landscape of royal obligations. There are speculations that Harry and Meghan's children may have been born via a surrogate, using Harry's genetic material. If accurate, these children would be deemed his lawful successors. Nevertheless, the secrecy shrouding their births sparks inquiries into Meghan's intentions and conduct, despite previous occasions where the children were seen, doubts exist regarding their public presence. King Charles's clear indifference towards Harry and Meghan's family further fuels the public's doubt. The primary concern remains the royal succession line, with many UK citizens questioning the legitimacy of Harry and Meghan's marriage. Disapproval of the couple is vast, while their support is minimal. In contrast, Prince William diligently fulfills his duties within the royal family, securing a stable future with his well-educated children in the line of succession. Wild animal offspring are explicitly excluded from the inheritance line according to the law, leading Parliament to reject granting any powers to Harry's children. Consequently, Harry and his unrecognized family lack a proper foundation for claiming authority. Meghan is undeniably admirable. Are we lacking compared to her? What aspect of her character do you find most striking? Leading a life akin to Meghan's seems improbable for you. Do you grasp the essence of my point? Intriguing. Take a moment to ponder. One, two, three. Let me elucidate for you to reflect upon and assess its accuracy. At present, Meghan Markle holds the official title of Duchess of Sussex. You may now inquire about the qualities that contribute to her allure. She accomplished a feat usually viewed as challenging. Despite this obstacle, she succeeded. In an unprecedented move, she rose to the status of a princess within a royal family garnering attention through her pursuit of in marriage to a prince, an achievement unmatched by any other woman for a significant duration, added lucky to the list because she met Harry after he had spent ten years in the military, isolated from other royals who believed he was safer in Afghanistan, away from civilized society, where he spent 90% of his time playing Xbox. Her marital history, being married once or twice, and the mistreatment she suffered from men who viewed her as disposable further complicates the situation, as indicated by one of the air service soldiers assigned to protect him. With the exception of occasional visits to Kabul for entertainment at Alibaba's, enjoying belly dancers and kebabs, it's probable he went a decade without a romantic partner. Fortunately, fate smiled upon him when she came into his life right after his army discharge, exuding the charm and playfulness of a mature woman. Her experience in Jeffrey Epstein's circle gave her the tools to captivate a man who had been yearning for intimacy following his time in confinement, especially in the military. 
success relied on a combination of chance, timing, and a clever plan, with Harry naturally drawn to a sophisticated woman like Meghan, even more fortunate was the revelation that he seemed to be in search of a motherly figure. Additionally, he was unimpressive. It appears that the cycle is now complete for him, whether in the role of a son or a mother. This is the information we currently possess. But what about his cognitive capabilities? Let me explore that. Her appearance was described as cruel, greasy, and cancerous, with hair that resembled rats, oversized teeth, disease-ridden insides, a decaying uterus from multiple abortions and STIs, a waist-like aura, abnormal bony legs, dinosaur-like feet, an astounding lack of intelligence, incomprehensible ineligibility, inner malice, deceitfulness, vacuity, vulgarity, and a sheer essence of recklessness. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.